Greetings, brilliant community, and thank you so much for tuning in to theCUBE here for the last three days where we've been live from Detroit, Michigan. I've had the pleasure of spending this week with Lisa Martin and John Furrier. Thank you both so much for hanging out, for inviting me into the Cube family. It's our first show together. It's been wonderful. Yeah, you. you nailed it. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Great it's job. Great job, team. Well done. Three wall-to-wall -wall coverage is what we do. We, we stay until everyone else leaves, we, until they pull the plug. Until they turn the lights we'll out. Do We're still literally, literally broadcasting. Last whatever night. it takes news. to get the stories and get them out there at scale. Yeah. Great time. 33, great time. 33 different segments too, very impressive. John, I'm curious, you're a trend watcher and you've been at every single KubeCon. Yep. What are the trends this year? Give um, us the breakdown. I think CNCF does such a hard, it's a hard job to balance all the stakeholders, so one, Congratulations to the CNCF for another great KubeCon and, and CloudNativeCon. It is really hard to balance bringing in the experts um, who, as the, it, time goes by seven years, we've been to all of them, as you said. You get experts, you get seniority, you get people who can be mentors, 60% new people. Um, you have vendors who are sponsoring, and there's always people complaining <laughs> and bitching and moaning. They want this, they want that. It's always hard, and they always do a good job of balancing it. Uh, we're lucky that we get to scale the stories with theCUBE, um, and that's been great. We have some great stories here, but it's a great community. And again, they're inclusive. I've said it before, we've talked about it. This year, though, is an inflection point, in my opinion, because you're seeing the developer ecosystem growing so fast, it's global, you're seeing events pop up, you're seeing derivative events. CNCF is at the center point and they, they have to maintain the, the culture of developer, experts, maintainers, while balancing the newbies. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be really hard. And they've done a great job. Um, we had a great conversation with them, so, they, so great job. And I think it's going to continue. I think the attendance metric is a little bit of a false positive. There's a lot of online people who didn't come to Detroit. Uh, this year, and I think maybe the combination of the venue, the city, or just COVID preferences um, may not look good on paper on the numbers because it's, it's not a major step up in attendance, it's still bigger, but the community I think is going to continue to grow, I'm bullish on it. Yeah, I mean, at least we did see double the number of people that we had in Los Angeles. Very curious, I think Amsterdam, where we'll be next with CNCF in the spring and April, I think that's actually going to be a better pulse check. We'll be in Europe, we'll see what's going on. Totally. I mean, who doesn't like Amsterdam in the springtime? Lisa, what have been right. some of your observations? Oh, so many observations. The evolution of the conference, the hallway track conversations really shifting towards adjusting to the enterprise. The enterprise momentum that we saw here as well, we had on the show Ford, Yes. We had Mass Mutual, we had ING, that was today. Home Depot is here. We're seeing all these big companies that we know and love become software companies right before our eyes. Yeah, well, and I think we forget that software powers our entire world. Yeah. And so, of course, they're going to have to be here. So much running on Kubernetes. It's, it's, it's on-prem, it's, it's at the edge, it's everywhere, it's exciting. Woo, I'm excited. Uh, John, what do you think is the number one story? This is your question, I love asking you this question. What is the number one story out of KubeCon? Well, I think the top story is, is a combination of two things. One is the evolution of cloud native. We're starting to see WebAssembly. That's a big hyped up area, got a lot of attention. Yeah. That's kind of teasing Rightfully out the so. future. The future of this kind of lightweight, you got the heavy duty VMs, you got Kubernetes and containers, and now this WebAssembly shows a trajectory of app server-like environment. And then the big story is security. So software supply chain is, to me, was the number one consistent theme in almost all the interviews. The, in the containers, in the workflows, software supply chain is real. Um, the CD Foundation mentioned they had 16,000 mm -hmm. vulnerabilities identified in their code base. They were going to automate that, so again, that, yeah, that is the wild. Top, that's the top story. The growth of open source exposes potential vulnerabilities with security, so software supply chain gets my vote. Did you hear anything that surprised you? You guys did this great preview of what you thought we were going to hear and see and feel and touch at KubeCon, Cloud NativeCon 2022. You talked about, for example, um, the you know healthcare, financial services being early adopters of this. Anything surprised either one of you in terms of what you? predicted versus what we saw. Savannah, I'll start with you. You know what really surprised me, and this is ironic because I'm a community gal by, by trade, but I was really just impressed by the energy that everyone brought here and the desire to help. The thing about the open source community that always strikes me is, I mean, 187 different countries participating. You've got, um, I believe it's something like 175,000 people contributing to the 140 projects plus that CNCF is working on. But that, that culture of collaboration extends far beyond just the CNCF projects. 
everyone here is keen to help each other. We had the conversation just before about uh, the, the teaching and the learnings that are going on here. They brought in Detroit students to come and learn, which is just the most heartwarming story out of this entire thing. And I think it's just the, the, the authenticity of everyone in this community and their passion. Even though I know it's here, it still surprises me to see it in the flesh, especially it's in a place nice. like Detroit. It's yeah. so nice to see it. And you bring up a good point. It's very authentic. It's yeah. super authentic. I mean, what surprised me is one, the uh, WASM or WebAssembly. I didn't see that coming at the scale of the conversation. It sucked a lot of oxygen out of the room in my opinion, still hyped up, but it looks like it's got a good trajectory. I like that. Um, the other one thing that surprised me that was some, a learning was my interview with Sol, Solo.io, Adit and Brian Gracie, because he's a CUBE alumni and former host of theCUBE and analyst at Wikibon, was how their go-to-market was an example of a modern company in COVID with a clean sheet of paper and smart people, they're just doing things different. They're in Slack with their customers. And I walked away with, wow, that's, that's like a, that's a playbook that's not, was never in the go-to-market, VC-backed company playbook. I thought that was, a, for me, a personal walk away saying, that's important, I like how they did that. Um, and there's a lot of companies I think can learn from that, especially as the recession comes, where partnering with customers has always been a top priority, and how they did that was very clever, very effective, um, very efficient, so I walked away with that saying, I think that's going to be a standard, so that was a, a, a pleasant surprise. That was a great surprise. Also, that's a female-founded company, which is obviously not super common, and the growth that they've experienced, to your point, really being catalyzed by COVID, is incredibly impressive. I mean, yeah. they have some massive brand name customers. Amex, yeah. BMW, for yeah. example. Great point. I mean, I interviewed her years ago, and I remember saying to myself, wow, she's impressive. I liked her. She's a player, a player for sure. And she's got confidence. Even, this, even on the interview, she said, we're just better. We have a better product. And I just like the point of view, very customer focused, but confident. And I just, I thought that's an, a, great, a great company. And again, I'm not surprised that Brian Gracie left Red Hat to go work there, so yeah, great, great call there. And of course, other things that weren't surprising that I predicted, Red Hat continuing to invest, they continue to bring people on the queue, they support the queue, but more importantly, they have a good strategy. They're in that multi-cloud positioning. They're going to they're gonna have an opportunity to get a bite at the Apple, and I call the super cloud, as enterprises try to go and be mainstream cloud native. They're going to need some help, and Red Hat has always have, has the large enterprise customers. What surprised you, Lisa? Oh my gosh, so many things. Um, I think some of the memorable conversations that we had, I love talking with some of the enterprises that we mentioned, ING Bank for example, you know, or institutions that have been around for a hundred plus years. Oh yeah. To see not only how much they've innovated and stayed relevant to the, meet the demands of the consumer which are only increasing, but they're doing so while fostering a culture of innovation and a culture that allows these technology leaders to really grow within the organization. That was a re really refreshing um, conversation that I think we had, because you can kind of think of Absolutely. all these old stodgy companies, and ah, of course they're going to digitize because they have to. Think about working for the bank, I think it's boring. Right, and they were yeah. talking about, in fact, those great t-shirts that yeah, they yeah, had yeah, on yeah, were yeah, all yeah. about getting more people to understand how fun it is to work in tech for ING Bank in different industries. You don't just have to work for the big tech companies to be mm -hmm. doing really cool stuff in technology. What I really liked about this show is we had two female hosts. Yeah. How about it, that? Come on. Hey, well done. Well done on your recruitment yes, there, champs. <laughs> and not to mention we have a really all-star production team. I do yep. just want to give them a little shout out yes. to all the wonderful folks behind Brandon. the lines here. <laughs> Good job. It, it, without, Andrew, with, yeah, without Brendan Anderson, <laughs> and, uh, Noah, yeah. and Andrew, we of would be. Of course, Frank Faye holding it back there too. Yeah. Of course, Frank. I mean, without the business development wheels on the ship, we'd really be in, in, a, in, a, in an unfortunate spot. I almost just swore on television, we're not going to do that. It's okay, no one's regulating me. Yeah, <laughs> it was. You want much just took over Twitter. It was, so it was a close call. That's it's right. Be, it's going to be a hell state. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, shit's on fire, so we'll just see what happens next. I do, uh, I really want to talk about this because I think it's really special. It, it's an ethos and some magic has happened here. Let's talk about Detroit. Let's talk about what it means to be here. We saw so many, and, and I can't stress this enough, but I think it really matters. There was a commitment to celebrating place here. Lisa, did you notice this too? Absolutely, and it surprised me because we just don't yeah. see that at conferences. We're so used to going right. to the same places, Vegas. Vegas, Vegas, more Vegas, your tone, your San Francisco. Yes. <laughs> Sums up my feelings, yes. Right. Yeah. And, and 
Well, it's almost robotic, but, and the fact that we're like, oh, Detroit, really? But there was so much love for this city and recognizing and, and supporting its residents that we just don't see at conferences. You uncovered a lot of that with your swag savvy yeah. segments <laughs> and you've got more of that to talk about today. Don't worry, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, have you enjoyed Detroit? I know you hadn't been here in a long time when we did our, yeah, our I mean, intro session. I think it's a bold move for the CNCF to come here uh, and celebrate what they did from the teaching the kids in the city some tech. They had a session, I thought that was teach I the kids. I love that. That Me was too. good. I think there was a risky move because a lot of people like weren't sure if they were going to fly to Detroit, so some say it might impact the attendance. I thought they did a good job. Their theme rode ahead, nice tie-in. Yeah. Uh, and so I think I'm, I enjoyed Detroit. The weather was great, it didn't rain, and nice, and nice breeze outside. Yeah. The weather was great, the restaurants are phenomenal. So Detroit's a good city. I missed some hockey games. I'd love to see the Red Wings play. Uh, I missed that game, but <laughs> we always come back. I think, I think it's really special. I mean, we every time I, I talk to a company about their swag that had sourced it locally, there was a real reason for this story. I mean, even with Kasten in that last segment, when I noticed that they had done Carhartt beanies, Carhartt being a Michigan company, they said, I'm so glad you noticed, that's why we did it. And I think that type of the community commitment to place, it, it all comes back to community, one of the bigger themes of the show, but that, yeah. that passion and that support we need more of that. Yeah. And the thing about the guests we've had this past three days have been phenomenal. We had a diverse set of companies, individuals come on theCUBE, you know, from Scott Johnson at Docker, really one-on-one. -on -one. We had a great, intense conversation. Great way to kick he it off. He shared a lot of inside baseball about Docker, super important company. You know, impressed with companies like Platform 9 that's been around since the OpenStack days, who are now in a relevant position. Ralphie Systems, hot startup. They don't have a lot of resources, a lot of guerrilla marketing going on. So I love to see the mix of startups really contributing. The big players are here. So it was a real great mix of, of companies. And I thought the interviews were phenomenal. Uh, like you said, Ford, we had a Kubia launched uh, yes. on the Cube. That's uh, We Cube scooped for the location for Cube, CubeCon Cube. You North did. America, Chicago, yep. everyone, in case you missed it. We, Priyanka was nice enough to share that with us we yesterday. We had great Which Sarbi great. Joel, Cube analyst on, came on. Pete Townsend yesterday with you guys. We had like analyst speed dating last night. <laughs> we had, <laughs> <laughs> How'd that go? It was actually great. One of the things that they- Did they hug and kiss at the end? <laughs> Here's the funny thing is that they were debating the size of the CNCF. One thinks it's too big, one thinks it's too small, and I thought, is John Goldilocks? <laughs> yeah, What's yeah. John going to think about that? Oh, I love that segment. I thought, because Keith and Sarbeet, they know each other on Twitter all the time, and I heard Keith say before we went, now let's have it out on the queue. So that was fun to watch. Thank you for creating this forum for us to have that kind awesome. of discourse. Yes, well, it wouldn't you. be possible without the sponsors. I want to thank the CNCF. Absolutely. And all the ecosystem partners and sponsors that make the Cube possible. We love doing this. We love getting the stories. No story's too small for the Cube. We'll go with it, do whatever it takes. And if it wasn't for the sponsors, the community wouldn't get all the great knowledge. So, and thank you guys. Hey, yeah, we're, we're happy to be here. Speaking of sponsors and vendors, should we talk a little swag? Yeah, what do you guys right think? All right, okay. So now this is becoming a tradition on theCUBE, which I'm very delighted, the, the Savvy Swag segment. I do think it's interesting though, I mean, it's not, this isn't just me shouting out folks and showing off t-shirts and socks. It, it, it's about standing out from the noise. There's a lot of players in the space, we've got a lot of CNCF projects, and one of the ways to catch the attention of people walking walking the show floor is to have interesting swag. So we looked for the most unique swag on Wednesday and I hadn't found this yet, but I do just want to bring it up. Oops, I think I might have just dropped it. This is cute. Is most random swag of the entire show goes to this toothbrush. I don't really have more in terms of the pitch there because <laughs> this is just random. I, but so everyone so needs this, and you Clean forget up. these. Yeah. So the idea was to uh, brush your brush your cloud bills. So I think they're reducing the cost kind of, of a cloud. Kind of hygiene angle. Yeah, yeah, they're very much a hygiene angle, which I found yeah. a little ironic in this yeah. crowd, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> Don't leave the lights <laughs> on on the cube, like that's it. what they yes. say. <laughs> I mean, we are the cube, so it would be unjust of me not to show you a Rubik's Cube. This is actually one of those speed cubes. I'm not going to be able to solve this for you with one hand on camera, but apparently someone did it in 17 seconds at the booth. Knowing this audience, not surprising to me at all. Today we are, and yesterday was the t-shirt contest, best t-shirt contest, today we really dove into the socks. So this is, I noticed this trend at KubeCon in Los Angeles last year, lots of different socks, clouds, obviously a theme for the cloud, I'm just going to lay these out. Uh, lots of gamers in the house, not surprising here on level this one. Got to level up. I love these because they say it's not a bug and uh, anyone who's coded has obviously had to deal with that. We've got, <laughs> 
crowd. Uh, there's so Star Wars is a huge theme here. There's Lego sets. I think it's Star Trek. But that's Star okay. Trek. We'll go. Could be both. <laughs> Never mind. I don't I mean, want to. Could... Go... You, you can you can flex your nerd and geek no, with us anytime they, you want, John. No, I'm I don't mind getting corrected. I'm all about I'm all about the truth. Star Trek, Star Wars. Okay, well, same. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Yeah, no, no, this is great. Uh, Slim AI was nice enough to host us for dinner on Tuesday night. These are their lovely cloud socks. So you can see cloud native, obviously cloud native foundation, cloud socks, whole theme here. But if we're gonna narrow it down to some champions, I, I, I love these little bee elephants from Raft. And when I went up to these guys, I actually probably would have called these my personal winner. They said, again, so community focused and humble here at CNCF. They said that Wiz was actually the champion. According to the community, these unicorn socks are pretty excellent. And I have to say the branding is flawless. So we'll go ahead and give Wiz the win on the best sock contest. For the win. Yeah, Wiz for the win. However, the thing that I am probably going to use the most is this really dope Detroit snapback from Caston. <laughs> so I'm going to be rocking this from now on for the rest of the segment as well. And uh, I feel great about this snapback, dude. Looks great, looks good on you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, John. <laughs> uh, so, what are, we, what are we expecting between now and KubeCon in Amsterdam? Well, I think it's going to be great to see how they, the European side, it's a chill show, it's great, it brings in the European audience from the global perspective. I always love the EU shows because, one, it's, it's a great destination. Amsterdam's going to be a great location. And I'm pumped. The American crowd loves going over there. All the Venn cities that they choose are always awesome. I miss Valencia because they got COVID. I'm really bummed about that, but I love the European shows. It's just a little bit, it's high intensity, but it's, it's a European chill. They got a little bit more of that siesta vibe going on, yeah. and it's just awesome. Yeah, and no, I, I think that the mojo that carried throughout this week, it's really challenging mm -hmm. to not only have a show that's five days, but to go through all Seriously. the way to a Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time and still have the people here, the energy, still and packed. all the collaboration, yeah. the conversations that are still happening. I think we're going to see a lot more innovation come mm -hmm. uh, spring 2023. Yeah. So should we do a bet? Uh, somebody's got to buy dinner who, well, I guess the folks who lose this will buy dinner for the other one. How many attendees do you think we'll see in Amsterdam? So we had, we had 4,000 roughly one. in Los Angeles. Priyanka was nice enough to share with us that there was 8,000 here in Detroit, and I'm talking in person. We're not going to meddle this with the online. 500. I was okay. going to say six, 6K. I'm going 12,000. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go big. I'm, I'm going to go opposite $1. prices, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly where I was driving with it. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going absolutely all in. Uh, I think the momentum here is building. I think if we look at the numbers from... We do a family feud. Cast and Beam. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and they mentioned that they had 11,000 people who have taken their Kubernetes course in that first year. If that's a benchmark and an indicator, we've got the veteran players here. But I do think that, that I, I personally think that the hype of Kubernetes has actually preceded adoption, if you look at the data, and now we're finally tipping over. I think the last two years we were on the fringe, and, and right now we're, we're there. It's great. Well, on that They're note, the Sunday. <laughs> on that note, actually, on that note, <laughs> as we are talking, so I, I got to give credit to my co-host. We deal with a lot of background noise here on the Cube. It is a live show floor. There is literally someone on an e-scooter behind me. There's been pong going on in the background. The sound <laughs> will haunt the three of us for the rest of our lives, as well as the production Welcome crew. The cube, baby. And and just as we're we're sitting here doing this segment, last night they turned the lights off on us. Today they're letting everyone know that the event is over. So on that note, I just want to say, Lisa, thank you so much. Such a warm welcome yep. to the Good. team. John, thank yep. you. what would we do without you? You did an amazing job, first you Cube, did. three days. It's a big show. So you got staying power, I got to say. Absolutely. Look at that. Not he bad. said it on camera now. So you all are stuck Not with bad. me. <laughs> a plus. Oh, yeah. Great job to the team. Again, we do so much flow here. Brandon, team, Andrew, Noah, Anderson, Frank. They're doing our Great hair, job. they're touching Great up job. makeup, they're helping <laughs> me clean my teeth, staying we hydrated. Look good because yeah. of and you. the guests, thanks for coming on and spending the time with us, and of course the sponsors. Again, we can't do it without the sponsors. If you're watching this and you're a sponsor, Support the Cube, it helps people get what they need, and also we do a lot more uh, segments around community and a lot more yeah. uh, educational stuff. So we're going to do a lot more in the EU and beyond, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to everyone, thank you to the community, thank you to the Cube community, and thank you for tuning in, making it possible for us to have somebody to talk to on the other side of the camera. My name is Savannah Peterson. For the last time in Detroit, Michigan, thanks for tuning in to the Cube. Okay, we're done.